Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do another wrap up of the Stabby books. So I have horror, mysteries, as well as some true crime. And I noticed as I was compiling this video that I tend to do a certain thing when it comes to the books that I pick up and I'll get into it more in detail as we go along. But I realize I'm doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And isn't that the definition of insanity? So I probably need to switch things up. I'm purposely being a little bit vague, so let's just get into the video. First, I want to talk about a young adult horror book called The Mary Shelley Book Club by Goldie Malvosky, and this follows a young teenage girl who survived a horrific traumatic event and has now moved to a new place, is starting over fresh, and in order to cope with her past trauma, she has fallen in love with horror movies. And so she actually finds it really comforting to watch these movies, and that is a big passion of hers. She finds new friends at this new school and ends up getting pulled into a group of pranksters that try to recreate different horror scenes and scare each other and the story goes from there when things start to get perhaps more serious. I picked up this book with some friends that wanted to buddy read it and honestly the premise in terms of the horror movie buff was easily the most compelling part of the story. I really did like the references to different horror movies and the fact that her friends were not horror fans so constantly they were just not getting references, things like that, and it was quite funny. So I do think if you enjoy horror movies, as most of you do that read the genre, you're going to enjoy that piece of the story. But beyond that, I found the story to be very mediocre. It read young, but I would say no younger than any of the other young adult books that I tend to pick up and read. And the actual mystery, what was going on behind the scenes, it was all very... I don't know, underwhelming, and I just found myself not really caring about the ending and who was behind it all. So overall, I can't recommend this one. It left me really disappointed. After that, I picked up The Haunting of Sunshine Girl by Paige McKenzie, and this is another young adult horror book. And this one follows a girl that moves to a new town and moves into a new house and right away believes that it is haunted. She ends up teaming up with a young boy at her school and starts to investigate, and supernatural things ensue. Now, this is the part of the video I was referencing at the beginning, and it's the fact that after reading a really disappointing young adult book, my thoughts at the end of that is that I need to stop reading YA, nothing wrong with the genre, but it's clearly not for me because a lot of my complaints about these books are that they're all the same, they follow the same tropes. And so right after finishing one that I did not enjoy, I went and picked up another one. And this one was, well, just okay. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the kind of character that this protagonist is, and that's the fact that she immediately believes that her house is haunted and just buys into it right away. There's reasons for that, but as a big skeptic myself, I didn't relate to her. And then again, it follows all of the classic tropes. There is the boy who's a possible love interest. And I do find especially these YA stories tend to kind of have a supernatural feel to them where it almost turns into like a supernatural investigation along the lines of something like Buffy and it's just not a type of horror fiction that I really love and so I'm always disappointed or underwhelmed by the stories. This one was easy enough to get through. If I didn't enjoy it at all I would have DNF'd it but by the end I was ready for it to be done. It's the start of a series and I have no interest in continuing on so unfortunately another miss for me and just reminded me that I probably should stop picking up why fiction if it's going to work out like this. Moving along, I then went on to pick up a book that was classified as adult horror, and that was another. This is a translated Japanese book that follows a group of students in a school where the protagonist learns early on that his class potentially has a curse on it so that everyone, when they get to this grade level and attend this class, horrible things happen to themselves and their families. And this cycle starts to happen again in his year. Now, I want to clarify that this book is, to the best of my knowledge, classified as adult. I looked online, it was classified that way in my library, etc. But despite that, it kind of read like a young adult piece, and that is partially because of the age of the characters and the type of story that it was. And so it kind of still followed the same tropes where there is these horrific things happening, but at the same time, the characters are kind of distracted by their own relationships. It's very supernatural in tone. I did enjoy this one to an extent for sure, but I would have enjoyed it more if it was 
written, in my opinion, more for an older audience. Now, this is a strange thing to say, but I actually also think that this book would work better as a manga. And it was interesting because I thought that and then found out after the fact, after I had thought this on my own, that there actually is a manga adaptation of this novel. It was not available in my library and I didn't want to purchase it, so I have not read that version. But if you can find that story for yourself as a manga, I actually think it's going to work a lot better. It just kind of follows the tropes of those kind of YA horror manga that I've read before and I just think it would have worked better in a smaller container because it is a fairly long novel so an enjoyable one I'm definitely trying to read more underhyped Japanese fiction so I'm glad I read it but yeah kind of read like young adult and it wasn't quite what I was looking for after the last few books I just read. <laughs> From there, I read an adult mystery, and that was Eye Contact by Cami McGovern, and this is a mystery novel told from the perspective of a mother of a young autistic child. He is the sole witness to a grisly murder of a young girl, and so the police are reaching out to them in order to try to find out who was behind this, if he is actually able to identify and be a witness to this crime. The story, as I mentioned, is told from the mother's perspective, so we get to have her interactions with the police as she tries to help them work with her son through the communication, and also, of course, her relationship with her son directly. I like the fact that this book has multiple autistic characters, so you get to see a range of the spectrum. I'm not entirely sure how accurate the representation is. I don't know if this is own voices. I wasn't able to gather that. But from my perspective, it certainly seemed to be an authentic representation of, again, something that is a very wide and vast spectrum. But I thought it was well balanced and I really did enjoy that perspective within the story. As for the mystery itself, I'll be honest, it was pretty average. I really did not care who the murderer was and was much more interested in the mother and son interactions. It was very close to my heart because autism is something that is really part of my larger family and so I found it really interesting to see how it was represented. So if you're interested in that perspective in a neurodiverse story, I would recommend this one. If you're looking for a really complex mystery that is just going to keep you turning the pages about who did it, this may not be that one. It's much more just a contemporary about characters that happen to be framed around a murder. And despite the fact that it involves the murder of a young child, I would say that it's very low in terms of content warning. It's not overly descriptive, which allows the story to be consumed by just about any reader. I'm pretty safe to say that you're not going to be too triggered by this one. Overall, I would definitely recommend it if that sounds up your alley. And finally, I want to end this video with a true crime book called Murder in the Family by Jeff Blackstock and this is a Canadian true crime book that follows a man who in the 1950s his wife mysteriously died and then years later the story is written and told from the perspective of his children who are piecing together what happened to their mother and they find out that she was possibly poisoned and they believe that their father who is now at this time of writing the book and has passed away of course was responsible for her death. This book was so compelling to read. I read most of it in a single day because I could not put it down. The narrative was very engaging. It does have a lot of details about the family as they're growing up. And again, it's told from the children's perspective and they do acknowledge that they used the resource of their older relatives to help piece together the details that they would have been too young to remember. And they also say right in the prologue, so it's really not a spoiler, that there is no concrete damning evidence within this book that is going to prove the case. There is no one that is sent to jail at the end of this book. Again, it says that the father has already passed away at this point. And so you need to go into this book knowing that you're not going to get really concrete, hard answers. But I will say that the narrative that is presented is very compelling. I feel that it is true, at least in terms of the larger detail. There is some conjecture that is put into this book that I didn't quite believe some of the little details of this meant that or he said this because of that because again a lot of things are very much colored by the fact that this is written from the family's perspective looking back on their deceased father but oh my goodness I just put myself in the character's shoes and I was just absorbed in the story. So if you're someone like me that loves a narrative nonfiction where it has a really compelling story that almost feels like fiction I think this one will appeal to you. 
a lot and I felt like it wasn't overly long it wasn't too dense and yeah I just highly recommend it because it was such an addicting experience and just what a story I cannot imagine what the family went through it was insane so that's it for this video here I'd love to know if you're planning on picking up any of the books I talked about here and despite where this video is going I kind of want to ask you to recommend me young adult books that you actually think I would like in terms of horror the reason I keep picking them up over and over again is I have this idea in my head that I really want to put out a top 10 young adult horror books and do a ranked list for you all however in order to do that I need to find 10 young adult adult books that I really like and at the time of recording this I could maybe do a top five but a top ten is just a little bit more fun and I know they're out there I just need to find them but the problem with that is that I keep picking up all of these books that I'm not enjoying so if you have recommendations for YA books that kind of subvert the tropes of that age category I would love to know otherwise if you're new to my channel this is pretty representative of what I read a lot of horror thrillers true crime as well as science fiction and fantasy and I'd love you to stick around you can help me out by giving this video a thumbs up sharing it around online yourself and you can hit the notification bell if you never want to miss a video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again later. Okay, bye-bye.